In 2009, Bordeaux won their sixth and final Liga title, beating what had been a dominant Olympic Lyonnais who had won the previous seven Liga titles. With the club going into the Champions League, beating teams such as Bayern Munich, Juventus, manager Laurent Blanc was leading the side with talisman Johan Gorkouf. <laughs> Strikers in Shamak, Fernando Cavagnaghi and Henry Seve. Unfortunately, the bankrolling of PSG and the conservative ownership of Bordeaux kind of gave them a steady decline in the period between 2011 and 2018 until they were taken over by an American hedge fund who were kind of relying <laughs> on that huge media pro deal. The media pro deal was gonna see Liga become kind of the second biggest league in the world behind the Premier League in terms of TV distribution money. However, it soon became clear that media pro had no way of being able to afford the deal with COVID setting in as well. That led to the LFP cancelling their deal with media pro, signing an eventual deal with the zone. However, leaving a 400 million pound Black hole. Now that money, along with COVID, the American hedge fund owners had no interest in bankrolling the club. Unfortunately, there wasn't many worst owners King Street could actually sell the club to, and they managed to find one in Gerard Lopez. He's been responsible for basically nearly bankrupting Lotus with that crazy uh, Kimi Reineken deal he did where he was going to give him £50,000 a point. Ended up owing him about $20 million. He then got his hands on Lille in Liga. Despite selling hundreds and hundreds of million pounds worth of talent, he ended up having to sell the club with £150 million of debt. Somehow then, he ended up in Belgium, and within a few seasons, he'd actually bankrupted Royal XL Muscron, having £4 million pounds worth of debt there. They're no longer alive. For some reason, King Street, I think obviously so desperate to get rid of the club, wanted to give it to anybody and managed to sell it to Gerard Lopez. And over the last few years, he's put in no money. Relegation within, I think, his first season into Ligue 2 and with no then real potential talent to sell on after too many. And Koundé leaving, the debts got bigger and bigger. Leading to today, where Bordeaux are finding themselves not only being demoted out of Ligue 2, but also out of the third level of French football. So they're going to find themselves in the fourth tier. And that is where we are taking over, taking over the biggest challenge in European football. I'm taking over as manager of Girondin de Bordeaux in the fourth tier. Now, I have used the database to get the lower leagues in, and then I have edited it myself to get Bordeaux down in the fourth tier. And I will make this database available for my Patreons, link down in the description. So, where are we? We obviously know that they've gone down to the fourth tier. So I have done and updated as best I can because there's been a league, really weird league structure coming in French football in the lower leagues. So there we are in the fourth tier. Now, obviously, Bordeaux got rid of all of their players, staff, and youth team. So as you could see on day one, 10th of July, I have nothing. Nothing in the first team, nothing in the second team, and then nothing in the youth team. Same with the staff. It is literally just me. Just me, but with a new ownership. So we've given the club the semi-professional status. That is the same as all the clubs in the Champion National 2. We're in the Group A division. However, with us now being fan-owned, we have a new club president, Hélène Gires, who is the club's all-time leading goal scorer. And with that, managing director, Jean Tiganin, famous uh, Fulham manager and was also part of the great Bordeaux team of the early 1980s. So with us being fan-owned, we've had to do a little bit with the budget and stuff like that. So I cancelled all the current sponsorship deals. There was a massive sponsorship deals and I've put us on two relatively low sponsorship deals. Now, as you can see, we are club owned. So I've got a club membership and the idea is that generates one million pounds per season. And I put that on the basis of 10,000 fans all paying a hundred pound a year to be fan owned. We can never be sold as well to an outside company. This team will, the club will remain fan owned for the duration of the save. Now that is to kind of counteract our problem with the facilities. So right now, Bordeaux play at the Matmut Al Antique, which is a council-owned stadium or privately owned stadium. Is a little bit of a sort of like a secondary company working with the council. As you can see, three point two five million pounds a year. Now, if that was in Liga, 
even maybe Lee Derwood that kind of support the club, we may be able to service that. But at this level, for the next few seasons, is going to be tricky. So that membership will just help us not plunge into deep debt. We are debt free. We've cleared the debts because we are owned now by the fans. So that leaves us at the starting point. We've got a wage budget available of £19,000 a week. That'll probably put us in and around sort of like the top end of the division with wages, which I think is realistic because they will still generate a really good support at these lower league levels. So, with no players, no staff, it's going to be a tremendously difficult pre-season. I'm absolutely unsure of how good the players are going to be. However, it does look like, with our fixtures kicking off, we've got Estrez on the 12th. According to the rules, I think I can pretty much sign players all the way through the season. And we're going to have a mixture of part-time contracted players and then at the same time, non-contract players will just get paid per game and then can leave at any time. So with that, we'll get a good judgment today. We're going to play the first two league games of the season after I've had a busy summer rebuilding the squad. And then from there, we'll have a good idea and we might be able to sell a few players, release a few players and then bring players in if we need to, because we need to get out of this division extremely quickly. The board and the media both expect us to be winning the league this year. There is a, a decent enough route with the top place getting promoted and then teams going from second to fifth, getting into the playoffs. So if we make a slow start and finish strong, getting in some signings potentially, then we may be Okay. Now, the youth team is famous, obviously, recently for players like Koundé, Tuameni, and I'm hoping with our great training facilities still, we'll be able to produce some young players that we'll be able to bed in next season, even into the first team squad, if we get a couple of absolute worldies. I've also lowered our reputation. I've lowered the season ticket sales and the average attendance, because obviously they're going to see that natural drop-off from a lack of away team uh, presence, and obviously just the club playing down in semi-pro leagues in the fourth tier. So I need to bring in an assistant, I can bring in a coach, I need a physio, I need a head of youth development because we need to make sure we get those youth team players through. And we also need to get a sign a squad of about, what, 20 players, 22 players over the course of the next month. We've got literally just a month to get this squad together ready for Estrez. On the opening game of the season, they have actually got some good players that you'll recognise. Yannick Sagbo, who at this level in terms of FM 14 pace, and where was it? Yeah, Hull City and Wolves. And also Mapu Yanga Mim Mimbwe, which I can remember for his Newcastle days. I'm going to say he was a bit of an FM wonder kid at the time. Could be wrong, but him at that level is absolutely tremendous. So that could be a difficult start to our life in the fourth tier. Right, we're going to speed on to the first game of the season. I'm going to go through everything. I'm not putting any implications on tactics, systems, signings. For the first few seasons, we just need to get through the leagues as quick as we possibly can without overspending, hopefully get some of our youth team players through, promote them best we can, but it's just about getting players on the pitch for this first season. So we're on to the 12th of August. It is the start of the league season. We've made loads of signings. Don't worry about that. But as you can see, it's not been a great pre-season. That was before we'd even started. 8th of July, I think we took over on the 10th. We had consecutive defeats to, to kick us off at home against teams in the league above, which isn't too bad. Too bad. We then played Le Mans as well. They're in the league above and we did manage to beat them. So far, I've signed 21 players with 10 over the age of 30 and 3 aged 40 and above. There's a couple of names in here that you'll enjoy. All right, so we're going to very quickly go through the signings that we've made. We're starting with a bit of a basic 4-3-3. So to kick us off, Zhen Ji. He's the oldest. Still can do a job. Look at his technicals and mental's really good. Stamina and pace ain't great. I've kind of just got him to be a bench player. He's on a non-contract as well, which basically means we only pay him 250 quid if he plays. If he don't play, sits on the bench and unused sub, he only gets 50 quid. So that's a nice little one that we've got to kind of balance the books because we have got some big earners in the squad. He's joined by another 43-year-old, Ruben Castro. He's going to be a poacher. He scored a couple of goals in pre-season. He's got tremendous technicals and mental even though they're on the downturn. We've got him on a two-year deal, because that's what he wanted, but £725 a week. And also, if he has a terrible season, hopefully then he will retire halfway through his contract. And the third and final 40-year-old is Carlos Kameni. I can remember Malaga days in particular and has been around the f European football for a number of years. Still pretty good. Reflexes as well at the, at the age of 40 of 10 isn't too bad. So he is in 
only £275 a week. I'm keen of not overdoing it in the first season because I think, I don't know, we might be good enough without having to spend an absolute fortune and plummeting the club back into debt. We've signed Helton Derice, 36-year-old centre-back. Selem Bem Jemia is another centre-back, 35 years old. 34-year-old, another centre-back in Bruno. 33-year-old full-back, Pierre Sagnia, who, by the way, does look pretty good. A non-contract in Paul Keiter. Six foot four, ball winner, just kind of that box-to-box -box midfielder. One of our better players is the 30-year-old Ellen Oyarazun. Not really done much in terms of his career, but has a nice, well-rounded player base in terms of his physicals, mentals and technicals. Good-looking dude. Backup keeper in Anthony Dupre, who started at the club back in 2009 when we were in the Champions League. We've gone big on a player that does not deserve this contract at all, but I had to go with one transfer with my heart, and it is Enzo Zidane, obviously son of Zinedine Zidane. It would be nice as well because my favourite player of FM24 has been Teo, who was absolutely tremendous in my Malaga save and was an absolute talisman. My number one goal is to get him at the club as quickly as possible. So Zidane is in, and look, he can play a couple of roles. He can play out left. He can play in central midfield as well. So more than happy to have a shirt seller at the club. We've got a backup, backup left back, non-contract, highly likely that he will need replacing at some point during the season, but just to have us players on the bench for this opening game of the season. Nathan Bizet, backup striker, little bit of pace, six foot three, yeah, just backup basically. Two-year deal as well. Vitti is going to be our holding midfielder. Been out all pre-season with an injury, but a nice little sort of like anchor man midfielder. Wesley Moustache has come in. We got him on a free from Bergerac Piri God, who were, I think, one of our affiliate clubs in our division. But I think at this level, decent bit of crossing. Yeah, three star. Three stars good, I think. Elias Abubakaka. Elias is basically in. I used him a few years ago. I can't remember where I signed him. I think it was for one of my saves back in sort of like maybe even as early as 2000 before he was at... Uh, 2014 when he was at Leipzig. Regarding as potentially a wonder kid at some point, completely gone off, he'll be able to do a couple of positions for us. Once again, non-contract, massive appearance fee, but if he doesn't play, and at the moment he's looking at being a bit of a substitute, un unused substitute fee, and the best thing about it, I can just release on a free straight away and it doesn't cost me a penny. Dion McGee was a player that I recognised because he is a former Manchester United player, went to Newcastle and Braga on a free transfer once again. Non-contract, but £650 appearance fee. I might even tie him to a deal. I think I could probably tie him to a deal of about 500 quid. Can do a whole host of different positions for us. Decent teamwork, decent technicals. Not great in his physicals with a strength of four. One of our better players has managed to get himself injured. Gonzalo Romero was going to be our right winger. As you can see, looks pretty good in terms of attributes. A little bit of pace, decent crossing, dribbling, first touch, passing. And we've managed to get him from Belgrano on a free transfer. Patrice Acevedo was part of my Newell's all boy save back in, what, FM22. Decent fullback as well, apart from the strength of three. But he's going to be a little bit of a backup. We've got him on a two-year deal as well. I think he is going to be adequate for the next few seasons. And finally, Arsenal fans, am I right? Yeah, Arsenal fans. We've got Miguel Aziz in, who's going to be our standout central midfielder. Along with that, we've got our B team. I don't think we're going to use the B team, really, especially for the first number of seasons. And an under-19s manager in. We've also got Laurent Robert. I wanted to get people that I recognised in this save. Laurent Robert, former Newcastle winger. I absolutely loved him for a couple of seasons when he was at Tyneside. He has been under 19 coach at Montpellier. He is now our assistant manager. We're only training twice a week, though, remember, because we're semi-pro. Attacking a 14 technical, working with youngsters, he's, he's fine. Along with that, we've got a new head of youth development, uh, was the head of youth development at Le Mans, which isn't great, a, a, like the league above, but been assistant manager, Monaco, Rennes, Stade Etienne, had an average playing career, but has got judging, player potential, and working with youngsters are all at 13, so for the first few seasons, I think he's probably better than a lot of our rivals at this level. What I'm, I'm going to do with him as well is let him make offers for youth team, like non-contract players, and see what he brings in for us for the course of the year. I'll have the overall yes or no on it, but he might be able to find us a couple of gems in and around sort of like the leagues, free transfers, etc. We've got decent physio in as well, 19 physiotherapy. We've got two physios in, where's the other one? Jerome Lopez, 19 and 18, absolutely fantastic at this level. And finally, coach Jaroslav 
Placil, who's been reserve coach, assistant manager and coach since around 2020, then left in the summer, I think, when everything's fallen apart. He then played for the club for the best part of nine years, joined the club on the back of their league victory. And I thought it was nice to bring him in, a little bit of an all-round look for this level, fourth tier, having me, Robert, Lauren Robert and Jaroslav Placil in, I think will be absolutely fine. So that leads us to... The first tactic. Now, I am going to have this tactic available for the patrons. We don't know how good it is. It's a little bit of a mu mixture of my Jose Mourinho tactic that I've done in the week. However, we've just changed it a little bit in terms of our high line. I'm expecting us... I wanted more support in and around Castro. So if we squeeze higher up the pitch, we could dominate the play in that box. He's, he's then going to have to do less running, less running in behind. And basically, we've just got a simple back four, central defenders, winger, wing back on one side, full back on the other, anchor man... Aziz, Yatare, he's another player, by the way, that I've completely forgot about. We've just managed to bring him in a lot better. Ball winning midfielder on support, six foot three, can do a whole host of positions, but I'm looking at him being that box to box for us. We're also in the midst of sorting out our scouting network, bringing in a chief scout and two other scouts, a two that you'll recognise in Impenza and Carlos Puyol. So there is the tactic. We've lost Romero, which is a little bit of a nightmare because he was going to be our standout player on that right-hand side. So at the moment, our starting level starts like this, with high hopes on Viti coming back in to take over the role of Zheng Zhi, that 40-year-old, 43-year-old Chinese defender, defensive midfielder. Aziz, I hopefully, is going to be the man with Orozun just on that left-hand side. I was going to change that to be an AP and have that going round and have a bit of a baller on that side, but I'm a little bit worried at the moment with just risking that. So we've just gone with a bog standard winger on support with the idea that he just crosses early who can't do anything else but be a poacher and I thought yeah he's what he's five foot seven he's not actually going to add much is he but we'll go with it for now we'll tweak it as we go we're going to play the two league games to start us off Eastres away and then Saint Prest who average who have an average ticket price of four pounds so immediately a little bit of worry because Eastres are predicted to finish second in the division. Well, that was the media prediction with AS Cans as well being up there. So this potentially is an absolutely massive game to start the season. We are also fancied we've got one, two, three, four, five players in the media dream 11, which does bode well for the kind of calibre of players that we've signed. They're going with a 4 4 2. Yannick Sagvo up front. He's going to cost us. Is that Molo as well? On that left-hand side? Yeah. He was a wonder kid, right? Monaco wonder kid. They've managed to get him in, and he looks pretty decent as well. He would be someone... Can we buy him? No. We can't buy him. We've got no money yet. But players like that, I think we maybe need to get a couple to just have backup for, to cover our flanks a little bit. Nice maybe just to get a point. Would a point be good enough? I think so. Just to get us off to the start of the season, get us up and running. And as I said, next episode, we'll come back and hopefully we'll assign maybe a couple more players, stretch that budget, maybe even release a couple of those non-contract ones. I think we might be lacking in the attacking areas a little bit, especially in those two wide areas with Romero injured. Right, first main highlight of the game. So good tackle from Alan. Are we breaking? As easy as central midfielder on attack. I think he's going to absolutely love this. He's found Ruben Castro and we fired it in. There's no VAR. It looked a little bit offside, but Bordeaux are up and running. 43-year-old Ruben Castro has put us in the lead, first first attack basically from us, finding Aziz, clipping it over the top, lovely touch from Ruben. That's what we want, just give him the ball in the penalty area, let everyone do the work and he will finish it off. It was, it says tight offside, how tight was it? It was super tight and we're 1-0 up and as you can see, despite Estrez looking a little bit dangerous early on, they've not actually had a shot yet. We've started really well. We're not going to get much in terms of balls up to Castro because he is five foot seven as well. So we need to maybe even change it. We could maybe go four, two, three, one and have someone in and around him to do a little bit of the leg work. Be maybe a little bit of a link player because he's literally just going to be a body in the box to finish it off just like that. What a strike that is after 36 minutes. He doesn't do anything. He's just saying, yeah, just give it to me and I will put it in. He gave the absolute Jude Bellingham. Sanya down the right. Hopeful crossing. Aziz causing havoc. Bad defending. And an absolutely wonderful timed half volley. Smashing it home. We're 2-0 up. We're on it now. We're absolutely flying. Castro. Into Dion McGee. He's on his left foot. He puts it in like a prime Robin 
onto his left foot, cutting in, cutting inside. Ruben Castro at the heart of it again. Your Tabare getting involved. Then McGee coming inside on his left foot. Not great goalkeeping, but it is 3-0. What a dream start we have made to the season. Not doing much on possession either. And we've got an injury already. So this is where it's going to be a little bit of a problem because at the moment we've only got, well, we've got seven subs on the bench. I always need to put a goalkeeper on now as well. Right, we're going to go Zidane, but we'll swap it over. Aziz goes and do box to box and then Zidane can be that central midfielder on attack. Right, Renault, wonderful French name. I would love us to be really good defensively as well. We are a little bit aging back there, but we've got plenty of options. So we can always sign players. Enzo's losing the ball in there. We can always just sign players as we go. Just got to be careful that we don't get into debt. Rare eight. Right, Alan on the left-hand side. He's got a wonderful technique. What's he going to whip in for us? He's fine moustache. Who finds McGee? Who rises at the back post? It's 4-0 before half-time. Dion McGee, the former Manchester United youngster. What a dream first half. We eventually ran out 5-1 winners. Conte getting a nice strike on 84 to give them a consolation. We, however, weren't finished. Abubakaka came on. I need to pronounce that name a little bit better than that. But Alan at the fast stick, heading home to give us a dream 5-1 start to the league campaign. Our second game of the season saw us coming up against Associan Sportif Desimpressed. 1945 founded, and they've never won a trophy. The game couldn't have gone any better. Ruben Castro from the penalty spot after 15 minutes. He then made it two. Just before half-time, Alan cutting across. Lovely poachers finish. Ears, hands to the ears. You're in the fourth tier, bud. And then early on in the second half, made it three. Alan at that back stick. Headers from the wingers, really good. They then got themselves back into it. Another kind of consolation goal. Into the 78th minute, nice little header from Jata. But Ruben still going at the age of 43, 86 minutes into the game. Enzo Zidane involved, Alan involved, lovely little one-twos. Ruben Castro picking up a hat-trick to give us a comprehensive 4-1 win. That leads us top of the table after two games. It does mean we can potentially just lay off the transfers a little bit. I am keen on getting into that third tier when you come up against professional clubs. If we look at the league above... There will be some professional clubs in there, big relegation as well. So we just need to be aware of that. We're kind of already planning a season ahead. I need to calm down a little bit. I know, but it's been a tremendous start for the club. We've got a little bit to play with in wages. 2,600 with the option of releasing a couple as well. Interestingly, we have got sell-on clauses, which will come in at some point. They've got a whole host of sell-on clauses, which will just help you know, fund the stadium cost and big stadium cost for the first few seasons is going to be tricky. And just so you can see at the end, our salary is third in division, which I think if this was real border would probably be leading the way. Cans have got 738,000. We're, what, a good 115,000 behind. So room to bring in. We're not absolutely dominating in terms of having been the biggest club with the biggest budget, signing the biggest and best players. We've started well, recruited well, Good tactic set up, remember, available for you Patreons. And we will see you in a couple of days for the second episode of Bodo. Thanks, guys. Smash a like on today's video. Much to appreciate it. We'll see you later.